Welcome, my friends, to another lesson exploring fraction addition. But this time, what do we do when they have different denominators? Well, let's try one of those simple ones out first. Like, oh, what do we do when we have one-third plus one-third? It's pretty easy when the denominators agree, because then we can just put them together and ta-da! The answer is two-thirds. It's very clear to see. But what happens if the denominators don't agree? Well, let's explore that. You know, let's bring that third back out. And let's give it something strange to add to it. How about a sixth? A third and a sixth, they're not even in the same family. Well, let's write it down anyway. One third plus one sixth. Now, we have three options here because we need these to be in the same family. Putting them together like this doesn't really help us because it's still two different families. But maybe you're even sort of seeing the shape that it makes there. Okay, hold on. There's three ways we can look at this. We could turn our first fraction into an equivalent amount in the same family as the second. We could also try turning the second one into an equivalent family of the first, but that doesn't always work. I mean, do you think we can turn this into any thirds? Hmm. There's also a third option. We can turn them both into the same family, and maybe it's not one that either of them have right now, but it's equivalent. Well, let's try that first way. We're going to actually take our first one and change it into the family of the second. For this transformation to work, I'll have to move him just to the side there. Ready, and... Using our powers of equivalency, we were able to transform that one-third into two-sixths. Let's write down what our problem looks like now. It looks quite a deal more agreeable. Two-sixth plus one-sixth, and it makes it much easier. We can put them all together and three-sixths. But wait, we're not done yet. Did you notice that that shape looks very familiar? Maybe it looks a lot like this? One half? That's because it's totally equivalent. So we can actually put our final answer down as one half. How cool is that? Da 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 da. Fractions are pretty amazing. Let's try another one because, you know, these families were very agreeable. Three and six, they share some things, right? Three is a factor of six. Hey, two is as well. But what happens if we get something a little bit weirder? Oh, let's bring that half back out, and let's try adding three-fifths to that half. Yikes! Well, let's clear our board and take a look. And let's write this one down. One-half plus three-fifths. We have to use one of those strategies to make this work, but I don't think we can change a half into fifths easily. I don't think we can change fifths into halves. We're going to have to use that third option I talked about, changing both of these into an equivalent family. And we want to think about common multiples and common factors. In this case, common multiples, because I think we're going to have to raise these quite a bit. Can you think? of a multiple that two and five have in common. And if we need a quick review on that, let's count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Okay, maybe that's enough. Let's try fives. Five, 10, wait a second. We heard something in both of those, right? Ah, oh, 10. 10 is a common multiple. So can we change both of these into tenths? Would that make it easier? And how would that look? Well, okay, I'm going to stand this one back just a little bit, because uh, mad the magic can be very, very dangerous. Ready? Turn into tenths. And you, too. Whew. Remember, if you're doing this kind of math magic at home, you just warn your parents beforehand. Okay, well, did, did it work? How many tenths did we end up with for our half? One, two, three, four, ooh. Five tenths. So there's an equivalent fraction. Five tenths. And how about our three fifths? One, two, three, four, five, six tenths. 
Interesting. So our number's raised up, but we still have the same shapes, the same amount here. Let's add them together. Why won't this work? Something's not right here. Why isn't this working? Wait a second, maybe I take one of those out and, uh, oh, there we go, much better. You see, I just had an extra one out there. Oh, what do we have here? We have a hole. Very cool, right? And that one tenth out there. So what do we actually have though? How many tenths? 11 tenths. This is what we call an improper fraction. Its head is so heavy it might fall over. But that's okay, we can change it to a mixed fraction using our amazing understanding of equivalency. What do you see now? One whole and one tenth. We could use a big one and a smaller one tenth. And that's our answer for that one. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson on what to do with fractions with different denominators. Well, what are you waiting for? Go and start adding them up, friends.